Hi everybody, it's January 9, 2019. I don't know about any of you, but the lie, the lie, the lie, the endless lies that we are fed by mainstream media, it, it feels to me like life has just become an endless marathon. You just have to keep running and sludging through the saturation of lies. And the lies are carrying the day, and it really upsets me. It really upsets me. I don't, uh, the lying, it's a wow. And I, the uh, obvious doesn't escape me. It doesn't go over my head. The obvious is that if these lies are carrying the day, and the lie of climate change, if that carries the day, that means that the United Nations Agenda 2030 uh, plan, the implementation of the Agenda 2030, will continue because it's based on the climate change lie. And if we can't get people to really honor, respect, truth, where we're living in a society with most of the people who don't give a shit about truth. They don't care about lying. They lie themselves. You know, if we were a society with the majority of the people who were of moral character, we would not be living what we're living. If we had Chuck Todd, you know, who, who, is someone who is, there's no moral character in this man. Meet the press. Remember when it used to be good, baby boomers? Remember? Well, it's no longer. Mainstream media, the endless lies that people are being fed. No, this would not be happening in a society with people who really regarded the truth as important, <laughs> okay, I guess it's not. And that really, it hurts. It really hurts because you can't escape it. The science is settled. Chuck Todd interviewing mayor, uh, the former mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg and Jerry Brown Two men who are treasonous, oh, well, don't want to upset anybody by cursing, treasonous pigs. They are instrumental in terms of implementing what the United Nations want, wants, transforming this world for what we refer to as the elite, you know, those few at the top who have a tremendous amount of wealth and power and they fund so many organizations. Michael Bloomberg who started the, what is it, we are still in organization, mayors and governors and county officials, universities, businesses, investors, all in so their signatories of the Paris Agreement. Well, their signatories on we are still in. They have about, there. it's over 30 or 30, um, I'm sorry, over 3,000 signatories, mayors and governors who have indirectly signed on to the Paris Agreement. It doesn't matter that Trump didn't sign it. What matters is Trump not saying anything about these mayors and governors who have essentially signed on to an international treaty, who are violating the Constitution. You know, it's the president's job to negotiate and sign international treaties 
Then it goes to Congress for Congress to ratify those treaties, and then it's implemented. But, but we're not living. We, we don't live in that country. We live as slaves to a corporation. And that's our government. Yes, it was incorporated. And so are all of our federal agencies. And as a corporation, it is a profit-making corporation. So the taxes that you're paying are going right into a corporation. And they are using the money to profit themselves and to reshape the world for the elite's pleasure and for corporate pleasure, you know, for profit to make all of us slaves. And all of it is based on the climate change lie. The science is settled according to Chuck Todd and uh, he also stated we're not going to give time to climate deniers it's amazing how easily manipulated so many people are. Oh, you're an anti-vaxxer. Oh, you're a climate denier. Now, these people never do any research. They just parrot back what they hear on mainstream media. And how do you fight people who are who are surrounded by the same kinds of people, you know, the majority of the people are of low consciousness and they are lazy and they don't do any research and I don't care whether they have a college degree or uh, higher degrees, they're still lazy and they just go with what the official narrative is. That is what mainstream media is reporting, the propaganda. Mainstream media reporters have no moral character. They read the scripts that government, the CIA, the United Nations give them. That's it. And the science is not settled. But Chuck Todd on Meet the Press says the science is settled, even if political opinion is not. We're not going to debate climate change, the existence of it. The earth is getting hotter, and human activity is a major cause, period. Yay, Chuck. And you know what? It's sad, but a whole lot of people who watch Meet the Press go right along with what this guy says. They are just too lazy to do the research themselves to find out that that it's a lie. You know, I, I want to pass along this YouTube channel. I don't know of any other YouTube channel out there that has documented video after video after video, countless videos of scientists and climatologists and professors and, and Nobel laureates who dispute this uh, climate change hysteria that, that is still carrying the day, guys. It's still going on. You know, it's really upsetting when you've spent seven years trying to get through to people, posting all of, you know, your research. Then you know that so many others have done the same, and we still, we still are. All things go. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. That's why the lie is so dangerous. That's why, you know, people believing lies and accepting lies, that's why they are more dangerous than even the liar. Liars just lie, okay? 
They're all about themselves. They have their own agenda. But the acceptor of the lie is they are the reason why the lies continue on. If people were of moral character, they would not accept these lies. They would not, if they were not lazy and irresponsible and children walking around in adult bodies, they would do the research to find out that no, we don't have climate deniers. What we actually have are reputable, highly reputable, highly respected, renowned, world-renowned scientists who are saying, who have been saying for years, no, IPCC, the International Government, the, the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, yeah, as well as the National Climate Scientists, the the National Climate Assessment Reports, we've had four. One just recently released. The fourth recently released, which I'm going to get into in a second. IPCC, what, have we had six or seven of those reports? And every single time they release these reports, you have countless numbers of scientists who come out and say, this science that you know these climate models and it, it's just shoddy what it's worthy of these reports it's worthy of the nearest trash bin we hear it over and over and over again um but mainstream media never reports they take those reports from the IPCC and whatever um, the panel name is for our national government outside, or not outside, inside the executive branch, Trump holding on to Obama scientists for the last report, which I will get into, but those two reports pushed by mainstream media over and over and over again And the real scientists, they say, this is not science. This is activism. The IPCC, that's an advocacy panel. It's not a science panel. So to have a mainstream media reporter, uh, the host of Meet the Press, say, we're not going to interview any of those climate deniers. You're not going to interview any scientists, Nobel laureates, physicists, climatologists, the chair of departments in universities. No, I'm not going to interview any of them because the science is settled when it's not. It's not. And you can come to 1000 for Ollie this YouTube channel, and you will see the science is so not settled. It is so not settled. This guy, Chuck Todd, is telling a gross lie, and it carries the day. It carries the day. How can this be? It can only be because people accept the lies. They accept them and or just don't care. And that's why we're going down. So I hope you circulate this channel because this channel, there's no other channel that, that compares. Here are all the scientists, the climatologists, the meteorologists, the all the thousands upon thousands all over the world who dispute what, what the IPCC 
and our national scientists on that climate panel are saying. Here, Nobel laureate. Keep warming up the earth. And the other interesting thing about this is that the blue line is the temperature, and the temperature increases before the carbon dioxide. And a lot of peddling and writing and things to try to get that changed around. But the facts are that these are the experiments. So finally, then, this entire video, he is talking about how climate change science is pseudoscience. Pseudoscience, and he defines it. Pseudoscience, where you start with this hypothesis, but you're really starting from a conclusion. Man is causing climate change. So you rule out all of the other factors that contribute to weather and climate change. These scientists are only looking at one factor, man causing it. And he says, we get to the end, and uh, this is from The Economist, don't despair grounds for hope on global warming. And if I, I ask the rhetorical question, is climate science a pseudoscience? And if I'm going to answer the question, the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. No such thing as man-made climate change. The fact is, there's no such thing as man-made climate change. You can watch this video, and in 10 minutes he explains it. I think the mission has already been accomplished because there is no science in climate science. I get particularly upset when I hear the term climate scientist. What is that? Okay, Climate science? See, this is how we, on the left, is how we normally do science, right? We, it's called the scientific method. We have a hypothesis. We figure out a way to test our hypothesis. We evaluate the hypothesis, which is usually not exactly what we predicted. And we go back to the beginning. That's how science is done. Okay? On the right is the climate science method. Okay? We start with, we've already made up our minds. How do we make the data fit what we've already decided? We announce the world is ending. And then we smear our critics. Now, is this and that's essentially what mainstream media is doing. Yeah, the science is settled, and we are not going to give time to climate deniers. That's what we're going to call them. They are dangerous, dangerous people. They're climate deniers. And you shouldn't listen to them. Don't give them the time of day. They're stupid scientists. We have the real scientists on the IPCC. You know, that 97% consensus of scientists around the world agree man is causing climate change. You're fed gross lies from government officials, government leaders. That was Obama saying the 97% scientists around the world believe uh, man is causing gl uh, global warming. And it's an utter lie. It's a bold-faced lie. And governments know it because these many of these scientists have, have uh, testified before Congress. Like Professor Judith Curry, who finally, because she was so ostracized as the chair of oh, the Georgia Institute Climatology, I'm not, I don't think that's the exact name. But she looked into the IPCC's data and found, wow, this data uh, is wrong. And she testified before Congress. And so did John Christie, Alabama State Climatologist. But no, they're just climate deniers. And we're not going to give them the time of day. Why, Chuck Todd? Why? Because you are just a tool of the United Nations to 
perpetuate the lie so that the world can be reshaped into a new world order. That's your job, Chuck Todd, a disgusting mainstream media reporter telling you lies. That's Chuck Todd. And we can't seem to get through to people. It is so unbelievably upsetting. Because the world is going, it, it's turning very, very dark. It's going to be communism on steroids, 1984, Brave New World on steroids. And, and people get hurt. And people have been hurt. And <clears throat> you look at whether it being used as a weapon. You look at the geoengineering, all of the spraying of these toxic chemicals and heavy metals and who knows whatever else. Man is controlling weather. If we can't get through to people, if they won't stop just accepting this friggin' lie and develop some moral character within themselves to care about what is happening. You know, it's not in the future people are getting hurt now. They're getting hurt now. And I guess that'll be the next video. But, yeah, let's not hear from any of these guys. Nobel laureate, Gary, Melissa. The way that's what science is about, though. I mean, really down at the bottom of it, any little field of science is, is, is at, there's some point where you really don't know for sure anything. You don't know. You make it up and you keep working to prove that that's not true. But it's, I mean, that's all you can do is finally prove that it's not true. You can't ever really prove something is true because you might be missing the other 95% of the universe that sort of said, no, that wasn't actually true. That was just a little fluke. Um, and I'll talk about some more things here. So um, he also, uh, let me go back to. Five fifty-five, and, and all the real climatologists have been replaced by these guys that write global circulation models that say if this happens and this happens then the temperature will go up by five degrees within the next they usually give themselves a good little margin of error there they, uh, by the time I'm dead the temperature <laughs> will have gone up four degrees or something. And that will cause a big problem in terms of rice production and all that stuff. And, and these guys are just sitting there with their little computers. And they're doing all that stuff. And they don't, they don't really know very much about climatology, in my, in my opinion. And climatology has become a kind of a joke. The people that are real climatologists do think about things like the, all the, the global epochs that the earth has gone through in our way of looking at it. But and then he just, you know, he's actually pretty funny when he's talking about the IPCC, you know, telling everybody that uh, you got to be feeling really guilty. You've got to give up your cars. You've got to start biking um, and try to uh, reduce your breathing. Reduce your breathing because that also is creating global warming and the cows that you have that are farting, get rid of them. You know, look, we've en we, we entered a long time ago a whole new era of just dark absurdity. It's like watching dark, absurd theater where you see people getting destroyed and attacked, smeared, killed off. And you, then you're surrounded by a whole lot of people who just don't care. It's kind of like everybody's just watching on the sidelines this dark, absurd theater go on and on and on. And we can't seem to 
get control of it? You're not going to interview a Nobel laureate, Chuck Todd? Or how about all of the professors, the climatology professors, who have testified before Congress, but they're climate deniers, so you're not going to interview them. You don't care what they have to say, even those who sat on the intergovernmental panel on climate change, like this man. Amidst the disputes and controversies of the past few years, I believe two points have emerged with clarity. First, the economics of climate change do not favor Kyoto-type commitments. Under current and foreseeable technologies, the greenhouse gas policies that we can afford to undertake would have such small climatic impacts as to be pointless. The same kinds of models that are used to forecast global warming predict that if all the signatories to the Kyoto Protocol complied with their commitments, the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that we would have observed by 2100 would instead have been reached by about 2105, a trivial difference. And Kyoto was too costly for countries to reach. When a policy is proposed that is too costly to implement and yields benefits that are too small to measure, you would expect reasonable people to see it as a bad idea. Instead, we observed a dogmatic elite consensus in support of Kyoto. In my mind, this never validated Kyoto. It merely discredited the elite consensus and suggested to me that the international political milieu in charge of the climate issue was unduly susceptible to groupthink. Unlike such air pollutants as sulfur dioxide and particulates, which Canada has been very successful in reducing, CO2 is not easy to capture, and once captured, there is no obvious way to dispose of it. There appears to be no way to cut CO2 emissions on a large scale without cutting energy consumption and impeding economic activity. Despite their enthusiasm for embracing targets, policymakers around the world have not been able to cut CO2 emissions while pursuing economic growth. Simply put, with regard to most climate policy, the cure is worse than the disease. Second, the official process for assessing technical and scientific information on climate change for the purpose of advising policymakers has become untrustworthy due to bias and partisanship. As a member of the expert review team for the last IPCC report, I saw things take place that violated long-standing principles of peer review. I documented some of them in various publications since 2007, but the issues never received much attention until the fall of 2009, when thousands of emails from top IPCC scientists were leaked onto the Internet. The so-called climate gate emails confirmed the reality of bias and cronyism in the IPCC process. The new leaks last month, you may not know, but another 5,000 emails were leaked uh, back in November, provided even more confirmation that climate scientists privately expressed greater doubts and disagreement about climate science among themselves than is reflected in IPCC reports. Yeah. So, I guess... We have a big problem. Not, Not one, one single, single factor of weather or climate, climate happening, happening today is anywhere out of line with, with the last 10,000 10, years. years. Nothing. You're being lied to. Everybody's being lied to. And these lies are very dangerous because people's lives are being destroyed. All right, listen to this guy. Sea levels, sea levels will rise between 1 and 4 feet by the end of the century. century. That's, That's according to the National Climate Assessment released last year. That the National Climate Assessment released last year. Okay, so they go on the assessments coming out of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and the National Climate Assessment Report. So, it was released recently, just a couple of months ago. Now, every single release is followed almost immediately by all of the scientists who say, this is not science, this is advocacy. These reports, the IPCC and, and the... Um, 
what is it the oh the global I can't remember the name the global uh, research global research uh, I can't get it um, yes US global change research program report the National Climate Assessment well what are experts saying on that what are the scientists saying about that report extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence what I find really interesting something that should really beg questions in Trump supporters minds is why he held on to the Obama scientists why did he hold on to the Obama scientists the critique of the report embarrassing systematically flawed tripe from Roger Pelkey climate expert Paul Homewood climate analyst, climatologist, Dr. Pat Michaels, Ken Hapala, I'm, if I'm mispronunciating names, I apologize, Dr. Patrick Moore, okay, here, POTUS, which is Trump. If Trump has his reasons for letting this Obama-era committee continue to peddle tripe, I wish he would tell us what they are. Why did Trump hold on to Obama scientists? Trump has claimed that he's a climate realist. We've heard him talk about how, you know, there are, there's a, a whole lot of scientists who dispute, you know, uh, the climate change, global warming theory coming out of the IPCC. Why did he hold on to Obama scientists? He knew what the report would reflect. He knew that the report would um, he knew what it was going to say. He knew it would be no different. The only difference in the fourth assessment is that it's more hysterical than the third. You know, those scientists during the Obama years coming out with their reports. Well, it's the same scientists. You cannot tell me that Trump did not know that they would be releasing a report. And then you have mainstream media claiming, oh, Trump is hiding the report. No, it's all a stage play that you are, unfortunately, the audience watching this stage play. Trump, hey, we, I'm not signing the Paris Agreement. doesn't matter. It's being implemented by mayors and governors and county officials, and it doesn't matter. But he never has said anything about those mayors and governors implementing an international treaty that he didn't sign and Congress didn't ratify. So this report comes out, and you have uh, the science director of the Heartland Institute, Jay Lear, say this, I have never seen such blatantly absurd conclusions drawn entirely from mathematical models that use only a limited number of variables. Of course, this shoddy science by Obama-era appointees serves its real purpose, producing a preordained political outcome that puts more power and money in the hands of the United Nations this report is a scientific embarrassment. University of Delaware climatology professor David Legates, former Delaware science, uh, state climatologist, wrote this. The Obama administration demanded the use of the extreme scenarios so that the impact on the populace would be substantial. This isn't about science. If it were, there would be discussions about the other scenarios and about the uncertainties in the climate system and in the models that drive these scenarios. This report deviates from even the activist science of the IPCC. <clears throat> climate science 
has all but died in this country. University of Colorado, Boulder, Professor Roger Pilkey wrote this. It's embarrassing. How is it that the 2018 U.S. National Climate Assessment failed to include or overlooked trends in the U.S. landfalling hurricanes, which would seem pretty important in a U.S. climate report? The report ignored one of its own expert reviewers who, re who wrote this. National Hurricane Center, going back to the 1800s data, clearly indicate a drop in the decadal rate of U.S. landfalling hurricanes since the 60s. Instead, you spin the topic to make it sound like the trends are all towards more cyclones. The failure to include trend data on U.S. landfalling hurricanes in this report is a remarkable choice. What, were they thinking no one would notice? Concerning the extreme scenarios in the report, Pilkey wrote, here's the source of the top line conclusion of the U.S. National Climate Assessment. 10% damage to U.S. GDP. It's derived from a study funded by Tom Steyer, billionaire Democratic donor and climate activist. And do you think that Trump didn't know this? If you do think that, you are very naive. Uh, or you just really have a need to believe that there's a white hat fighting for you to save the world. But both conditions, naive or so, so cemented in a belief that you're delusional, um, that kind of thinking is dangerous. You know, it's either one of two things. Trump is stupid or he is playing you. Either way, you're supporting someone who's stupid and therefore dangerous to you because he's so stupid or he's playing you and both are a danger. Patrick Michaels, director of the Center for the Study of Science at the Cato Institute, provided a detailed report critiquing the, the National Climate Assessment, the fourth. Okay, the draft, the fourth National Assessment of Climate Change Impacts is systematically flawed and requires a complete revision. Uh, the report uses a flawed ensemble of models that dramatically overforecast warming of the lower troposphere with even larger errors in the upper tropical troposphere. For these reasons and other reasons, the draft should be shelved. Did we hear anything about this report coming out of Trump? Did he say, I'm sorry for holding on to those scientists? I should have known that they would produce a report filled with lies and hysteria using fear to manipulate the people of the planet because unfortunately, yeah, the IPCC and these this National Climate Assessment carries the day all over the world for the United Nations to implement Agenda 2030, which means that more and more of you are going to suffer the consequences of these agendas taking place. Your home will depreciate in value. Your utility bills will skyrocket. Food prices will increase. We will have less food. All of it, all of it, deliberately engineered to bring in this new world order. But we do have people who just refuse to, oh, well, that's too scary to think about because they're children. They let mommy and daddy handle all of the scary stuff and they don't understand that mommy and daddy is a psychopath and doesn't care about them. And this is about the IPCC, their recent assessment. It's very careless and amateur about the standard of a first year university student, sloppy, shouldn't be taken seriously. 
let alone a body as influential as the IPCC or the governments of the world? John McLean, Australian researcher, uh, did all the work to analyze that report and found all of these gross errors that you would never expect coming out of scientists. And John McLean, no, I don't think you can just write him off as a climate denier and a crazy nut job. Why? Well, because. The two organizations that the IPCC relies on for that temperature data, data Hadley Center Met Office, they actually use John McLean as an advisor. And John McLean in 2016 pointed out certain errors to these organizations, which they promptly corrected. This is the same guy who's saying, that this <laughs> IPCC assessment, well, let me sum it up for you, is a crock of shit that really deserves only a just a one round trip into the garbage can. I will link below to everything, but it's really very upsetting when you see it's still going on. It's still going on. Science is settled. My God. And how many believe that? Well, a lot of people believe it because they have their own confirmation bias going on. And they have, they, I guess, can't just take a step back, do some research, find out that the science is so not settled and that who is putting out how many scientists? Well, one year it was 53, and that was the 97% consensus that Obama was talking about. 53 scientists on the IPCC. That's the 97% consensus. But if you do the research, you will find that there is, well, close to now, oh God, 50,000. 50,000 scientists who dispute this man-made anthropogenic uh, global warming climate change. But they do that, you know, flash flooding, the fires, directed energy weapons. People don't want to even entertain the possibility that man is controlling the weather. We've got all these flash floods and we've got, you know, an awful lot going on. Well, why? because they need you to believe that it's climate change. And you just won't do the research to find out that man is controlling the weather and bringing about all of the flooding and the fires. And you're believing the worst of the worst and the lowest of the low. And I would hope that people would really want to raise themselves up. Raise yourself up, please. Take a look. Take a look at even just this channel to find out that the science is not settled. Please don't be dragged down by the lowest of the low, the Chuck Todds, the Jerry Browns, the Michael Bloombergs. It does not matter how much money they have and how slick they look in their suits and their mansions. Don't be wowed by all of that. Please be wowed by the truth. Please be wowed by the truth. Please be repulsed by liars. All links are below.